Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're now going to introduce sequences. Okay, I'm going to break this up into a two-part series. Um, but what I really need um, to emphasize and what I really need y'all to understand is a sequence is literally nothing more, nothing less than a list of numbers. An ordered list of numbers, yeah. But the point is, it's literally just a list of numbers. That is it. That's what a lot of people freak out about. It's just a list of numbers. And so what I mean by that is, let's take a look at this sequence. If I want to write out the first few terms from n equals 1 to n equals 5, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug a 1 into n. And so that'll be 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2. So it'll be 1 half. When I plug a 2 into here, two, this will become 2 over 5. When I plug a 3 into here, I'm going to have a 3 over 10. When I plug 4 into here, I'm just going to get 4 over 17. And when I plug 5 into there, I'm just going to get 5 over 26. That is it. That is a sequence. A sequence is a list of numbers. Okay. Now, one of the questions that they're going to ask is, is this sequence bounded or unbounded? So let's say I have a sequence from 1 over n from n equals 1 to infinity. When determining whether a sequence is bounded or unbounded, the first thing that I like to do is write out the first few numbers um, in my list. And so if I plug in a 1 into there, I get a 1. If I plug in a 2 into there, I get 1 half. If I plug in a 3 into there, I get 1 third, and so forth. And what I'm trying to figure out is, is my sequence, is my list getting bigger or is it getting smaller? And I see that this sequence is getting smaller. Right? My list, I'm going from 1 to 1 half to 1 third, is slowly getting smaller. Therefore, I know that my upper bound is 1. No number will be bigger than 1 in my list because they're decreasing, right? And so if I want my lower bound, since this is consistently or constantly decreasing, then your lower bound is just your infinite term. You can find your lower bound by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n, right, of my sequence. And the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is 0. Therefore, this is a bounded sequence. And it's bounded from 0 to 1. Now notice how I put a parenthesis around the 0 and a bracket around the 1. Because 1 is a number in my list. 1 actually exists in my list of numbers. Now, this will approach 0. But never will I have the number 0 within this list. Okay, so that's why I'll put a parenthesis around it. But let's take a look at the second one. So for the second one, say I have n squared over n plus 1. Uh, once again, I'm just going to write out the first few terms and see what happens. When I plug a 1 into there, I get a 1 half. When I plug a 2 into there, I'm going to have 4 over 3. When I plug a 3 into there, I'm going to have 9 over 4 and so forth. And once again, I need to recognize, is my sequence getting bigger or is it getting smaller? And it's definitely getting bigger, right? I'm going from one half to a little more than one to a little more than two. And it's going to constantly increase, which means that my lower bound is that first term. It's one. No number is going to be less than one half because it's constantly increasing. But as for my upper bound, just take the limit limit as n goes to infinity of n squared over n plus 1. And notice how this is top heavy. Ooh, go back to Cal 1. Okay, limits to infinity. Limits to infinity. If you're uncomfortable with those, go back to my Cal 1 playlist. Go to limits to infinity. Because for this entire chapter with sequences and series, especially dealing with infinite series, you're going to be constantly taking limits to infinity. So be very comfortable with those. This is a top-heavy function, therefore that goes to infinity, which means this sequence is unbounded. Okay. So now that we've talked about bounded and unbounded, in the first two examples, they gave me an equation, and I wrote out my list. However, sometimes they may give you a list, and you need to write out the equation. So let's talk about how to do that. So let's take a look at number one. What this is, this is just pattern recognition. If you can find the pattern, then you're going to be okay. But I don't want you to do this. I don't want you to look at, like, what's the difference between 4 and 7 fourths and 10 ninths and 13 over 16? That's, that's pretty tough. Instead, what I want you to do is look at the top and bottom separately. 
Look at the top, look at the numerators. You have from 4, 7, 10, 13, 16. There I can recognize a pattern. Because on top, going from 4 to 7, that's plus 3. 7 to 10, that's plus 3. 10 to 13, it's plus 3, and so forth. And whenever you have plus some number, by definition, that's that number times n. Okay? Think about that. By definition, that's what multiplication is. If you have uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2, that's 2 times 3 right and so because I have a plus 3 across the top I know on top I'll have a 3 times n and so for my equation a n I'm gonna have a 3 n on top oh but we come across an issue and here's my issue when I plug a 1 into n I need to output a 4 when I plug a 1 into n, or 2 into n, i got to output, uh, output a 7. When I plug 3 into n, i got to output a 10, but that doesn't happen, right? Because 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. Dang. That's okay. Because if that happens, what you sometimes need to do is add or subtract in order to shift left and right. And watch what happens whenever you just move it to the right one. When I plug a 1 into n, 3 plus 1 is 4. When I plug a 2 into n, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and so forth. So whenever you're adding some number over and over again on either top or bottom, it will be that number times n, period, end of story. But sometimes you might need to add or subtract a little bit in order to get it aligned. And finally, let's take a look at the bottom. What's the pattern between 4 and 9 and 16 and 25? Those are perfect squares. And think of this 4 as like 4 over 1. And so it's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared. So it's just some n squared. And that's that first one. So let's take a look at the second one. The second one, I don't want you to think negative 1, positive 2, negative 3, no, no, no. First, I want you to see that it's alternating. And because it's alternating, because it's alternating, you're going to take that into account with a negative 1 to the n. Because negative 1 to an odd number will be negative. Negative 1 to an even number will be positive. And so for all my even numbers, when n is 2, n is 4, those are positive. But when n is 1, 3, or 5, it's negative. And so I already know that for my pattern, I know on top I'm going to have a negative 1 to the n. Okay, so that takes care of the alternating. Now I just look at the numbers. Now I'm looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, from 1 to 2, that's plus 1. 2 to 3, that's plus 1. 3 to 4 is plus 1, and so forth. And whenever you add numbers on the top, it's just that number times n. It's just that 1 times n. And when n is equal to 1, I should output a 1. When n is equal to 2, I should output a 2, and so forth. Took care of the top. But now let's take a look on bottom. Looking on bottom... Here, how do I go from 3 to 9 to 27 to 81? Well, to get to there, you got to go times 3, times 3, times 3, and so forth. Whenever you multiply some number, it's going to be that number raised to the end. Because once again, think about this. If I have 2 times 2 times 2, that's 2 cubed. That, by definition, is what an exponential is. And so because we're doing times 3 along the bottom... That's going to be 3 to the n in my pattern. And I need to make sure that it lines up. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed 27, we're good. And there's your pattern. And what's going to happen is, is throughout, or you're going to be given different examples that's going to have 1 or 2 or 3 of these things you got to be aware of, or 4 with the n squared. Okay, so just as a recap, whenever you add numbers across uh, either top or bottom, it's going to be that number times n, okay? Be aware, maybe you might see squares, so like 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so forth, so be aware of that. If it's alternating, take that into account with the negative 1 to the n, and whenever you multiply by a number, it's going to be that number raised to the n, okay? That's what an exponential is. Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about before we end this video, and that's determining whether a sequence will converge or diverge. There's tons of different rules. There's like, I can give you four, five, six different rules, and I don't want to do that. I want you to be aware of one thing, and the one thing I need you to be aware of is a sequence is literally just a list of numbers. So in order to determine whether a sequence will converge or diverge, I want to see what my list is doing 
taught at infinity. If out at infinity is going to the same number over and over and over again, it converges to that number. But if it doesn't, it doesn't. So, let's take a look at number one. For number one, whenever I take the limit as n goes to infinity of this, so I can see what's going on out at infinity, the limit as n approaches infinity of n times n plus 2 over n plus 3 squared, highest term on top is an n squared, highest term on bottom is an n squared, same over same, you take the coefficients, which is 1. Out at infinity, what's going on is you have 1, 1, 1, 1, and so forth. My list will converge, and more specifically converge, to 1. Let's take a look at number 2, though. Taking a look at number 2, I see that it's alternating. And I'll keep that in the back of my mind. I'm going to keep in the back of my mind that it is alternating. But whenever I'm looking for the term, I'm really going to take the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n squared plus 1. The reason I don't care about the negative 1 to the n when taking the limit to infinity, this has no intrinsic value. All it tells me is that it's alternating. So I'm going to keep that in mind, but my number, limit as n goes to infinity of n over n squared plus 1, this is a bottom-heavy function, and this is going to 0. So what's my list doing out at infinity? It's going 0, 0, 0, and so forth. This sequence will also converge, but it will converge to zero. Finally, let's take a look at number three. Number three is also alternating, so I'll take that into account, I'll keep that in the back of my mind, but whenever I'm looking for the limit, I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus one. It's a, and notice that same power on top over same power on bottom, you take your coefficients, which is one. But what's my list doing out at infinity? Remember, it's alternating. There's no such thing as a positive and negative zero. So I don't have to worry about that. But there is such things as positive and negative ones. And so out at infinity, I'm going from one to negative one to one to negative one and so forth. Because this is alternating, it's going from positive to negative, and it's going from one to negative one over and over and over and over. So this sequence doesn't converge. It doesn't converge to a specific number, but nor does it diverge to infinity. So what you say with situations like this is that your sequence will diverge by oscillation. The sequence will diverge by oscillation, okay? So, once again, all you need to keep in mind when dealing with sequences to determine whether they converge or diverge is remembering that they're a list. So I want to see what's going on at infinity. So take the limits to infinity and just see what is your list doing out there. If your list will converge to a single number, great, it converges. If it goes to infinity, great, it diverges to infinity. But if it alternates and doesn't go to a specific number, then it'll diverge by oscillation. Okay? So, that ends part one of sequences. Go ahead, join me for part two, and what we'll do is we'll talk about recursive sequences.